Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bounce Off. I'm Scott Ball. It's Georgia Ball. And we're here to talk some Disney today. But before we get to that, we want to announce uh, the cover reveal for Georgia's new Scholastic book. Uh, the author of the graphic novel series that I do adaptations for posted on, on Super Bowl Sunday the new cover coming up for the Great Chicago Fire. So that's the next graphic novel coming out. It's going to be the Chicago Fire. And I got to see the interiors of it last week. It is really cool. It's the kind of stuff that I, I was worried about for the artist. I didn't know how they were going to pull it off. It is pages and pages, like 90 pages of night scenes under flame. So all of that reflection and orange glow and embers everywhere. And there's horses and buildings. And they pulled all of it off perfectly. When's this coming out? Do we know? Uh, no, actually. They are putting the finishing touches on it. And I don't know if the exact date has been announced yet. Okay. But coming soon. And this is which one? I mean, uh, as far as like how many have been done so far? This is like, was this mm. like seven? I think seven or eight, yeah. Seven or eight? It's eight. Well, hopefully there will be another eight. Because <laughs> we do enjoy making these. Or you do. Yes, I do. I enjoy cashing the checks. <laughs> <laughs> I also enjoy that. <laughs> All right. So, the the news this week related to Disney and Disney comics is uh, centers around uh, Uncle Scrooge, of all things. One of my favorite uh, characters of all time. Well, this is something that got you pretty wound up. That didn't... everyone keeps saying I'm really wound up. Oh, no, because that. like it didn't mean as much to me because I don't know as much about the Scrooge comics. When they were talking about what they were doing, I wasn't even familiar with the details. Yeah, I mean, it's just hard to kind of wrap around the idea of banning Uncle Scrooge comics. I mean, and to be clear, it is an all out out ban. Well, let's but. put it this this way. There hasn't been for a really long time a period when these were not in print because they're all very actively uh, financial sellers. It's not like they would be putting it out of print because no one buys it. And they're really huge in Europe and they're still pretty big with the Donald Duck collectors here. Well, and they're being very clear about it. They're saying it's, gonna, it's not going to come back. Yeah, it's not as if they're doing it, though, because the demand isn't there. Right. And it's come totally normal to stop printing a book because no one's buying it anymore. Yes, but you don't normally just talk about it. It's just it's out of print. But to right. come out and make take that extra step of say, it's not just going to be out of print. It's never going to be seen again is a pretty outrageous statement to make. I think more accurate to say it's being buried. We are burying it. So it'll never be seen again. Yeah. Anyway. So we're talking about two books by uh, Don Rosa. Uh, he's uh, most famous for doing the whole series of Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. He's done many, many Uncle Scrooge, Donald Duck stories and during his career. The two books in question are The Richest Duck in the World and The Dream of a Lifetime. Richest Duck in the World is one of the chapters of The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck which is also an Eisner award-winning series. So we're, we're getting ready to do away with an Eisner award book. Now, the reason that they're getting rid of this book is really centers most likely. They're not specifying, but if you look into it, it probably revolves around one set character, which is named Bombi the Zombie. And yes, he is a zombie. So there's like a witch doctor. I think his name was Fulazula. And um, then this zombie, which chases Uncle Scrooge around. Now, the interesting thing here is that this character is not a character that Don Rosa created. This is actually a character created by Carl Barks. And if you're not familiar with Carl, who Carl Barks is, you can look back at one of our previous episodes with John Lustig, where we went into like a, a 10 hour expose on everything Carl Barks. In fact, we even talk about this character. We have a whole video called Don uh, Carl Barks censorship. Yeah. You can go and, back and look at that. And we even talk about this character who, as he came up um, in stories there. And so 
if they are banning these two stories uh, by Don Rosa, it seems pretty clear they're going to end up banning the, the stories where that zombie character appeared by Carl Barks, who actually created that character. They haven't said that, but I can't imagine them cutting one spot and not the other. Mm. So this begs the question, is this a good idea? I hate burying history. I, I think that it, it it doesn't teach us anything to pretend things never happened. And there's a whole lot of people that are still buying those Don Rosa books. Mm. Now you're going to decide for everyone else what they're allowed to know happened in the past or not. And where does it end? I mean, well, it never ends. I mean, once once you cut from one spot, then you're going to just start cutting all over the place. Once you feel like you've had the green light of everyone's okay with it, this and the attempt to make sure that you never offend anyone ever is the real whitewashing of history. I mean, the the truth about history is me- it's messy. Yeah, and just pretending like just discarding it and hiding it and burying it is is not going to mean that it didn't happen. It's not going to change anybody's feelings or make anybody feel better. It's yeah. It's just lying. And, you know, this is not going to just affect in this area. You know, there's a lot. It's going to affect their other characters within Disney. I mean, what about Mickey Mouse? The Floyd Gladfordson series that featured a lot of storylines with Mickey as playing a, like a police detective. Uh, along with Chief O'Hara. And in those cases, Mickey was actually fighting crime and i think at times had a gun and stuff like that and we've already read in places where they've been taking out guns here and there and like trying to replace them with toy guns it's just Mm -hmm. it's it's really not a a good plan to just be banning things and really we need to I, i feel like people need to be able to handle stuff yes um people need to know a little bit more about history than they apparently do uh, you don't learn from things that you can't see. You don't learn from mistakes that you don't know ever happened. Two two books. It, it's not really uh, an epidemic or anything like that yet. But I'm worried about it becoming one. I'd like it to stop before it does. You know, I'd hate to see a lot of Karl Barks stories just eliminated because they were created 60, 70 years ago and it was a different time different place but that doesn't mean that they have no value or at all we don't really know we're in a brave new world now where you know history just doesn't exist and everyone lives in the present and we're supposed to concentrate on our, our pleasures and not on the past or think about the future and then the only problem with that is like i remember how that worked out for the eloy <laughs> like <laughs> You're referring to like uh, the, the time, time machine. machine. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just like a, a world where like history is taken away because then people don't have to be educated. And then it really ended up bad for them because they ended up becoming food. Yeah, well, <laughs> you become rudderless. Like, you just you don't understand where everything came from and how far we've come. You certainly can't figure out how far we've come if you don't know how bad the mistakes were in the past. Yeah. Now, an interesting thing with this is that if you look at like Disney comics in the United States, it's just not that big. It just isn't. Um, but if you go across the ocean over to Europe, it's a different matter, a different story entirely. In fact, really... Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge, those two characters are far more popular, I believe, in Europe than even Mickey Mouse and really just about anything else. And so Carl Barks over there is almost, you know, like it's just like a beloved figure over there. And if you just go in and you start canceling a lot of his stories because they don't match by quote unquote today's standards, I just think that they're going to be opening up a Pandora's box that Disney's not prepared for. I think a lot of people will be willing to uh, to boot uh, them to the curb, and I think that they should well, really reconsider that. You know, this will probably just go is that they won't change anything about what they're doing in Europe, and it'll just be us because that's how changing history works. Well, that is not what they said. They yeah, were very okay. clear. I mean, they can backtrack, 
But um, and and it probably wouldn't necessarily in this case, even though Don Rosa also is quite popular over in Europe as well. I can't imagine this is going well. I mean, because Don Rosa has already said the entire volume of uh, Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck is just toast. It's gone because you can't. The, one of the chapters can't be eliminated and keep the whole thing intact. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was guess. asking though, is like how much control does he have over that? None. Yeah. I mean, Disney owns everything. Well, like, if they wanted to just rip it out and then try to present the rest of it broken, would he have any control over that? I doubt it. I don't think he would. I don't either. I think he could put up a big stink. I, as he always does. <laughs> I hate that this is going to make me defend Donna Rosa, but... I try to make my defenses based on like the matters at hand rather than mm -hmm. the people themselves. I, I think it's dangerous when we just yeah. re, we make our opinions based off of personalities. I think that's a problem. Yeah, but, it's just when he claims that, well, you just can't publish it at all. I'm not actually sure that he can control that. It, no. it would sound a lot more to me like Disney would just make it awkward. <laughs> it wouldn't have and an ending. It, yeah, cut it out without an ending. Yeah, it would be like making the time machine and just cutting out the last part where he travels. Yeah, but doesn't that totally sound like something they would do? They don't care. They don't really care, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to comics. They really don't. Yeah, care. they don't care. <laughs> I mean, they, the, all the comics now is just done on the Italian model as it is, and it's just like there's really very very little interest on their part but um yeah I, I i just don't think it's going to go to good places and if you look at it like the way disney can't really afford this right now i mean i was doing some like research into that they're not a popular company these days i mean last year they were pulling under banks as far as popularity and a lot of people don't like banks. And when you're less popular than banks, <laughs> that's really funny. If you're less popular than banks, you need to be taking a real gut check look at yourself. So, goodness, I don't know. The so J.P. Morgan executive, uh, which is kind of a financial institution, that has been going to Epstein Island regularly, and he was communicating all these emails by choosing like Disney characters that he wanted to go down and meet up with. So it's like, hey, say hi to Snow White for me. Uh, what? What? Then they ask back, like, well, what do you want to have next time? It's like Beauty and the Beast. Like, well, we can only provide one of those. They said in the email. Wow. <laughs> yeah, crazy, huh? Disney connection and banks, but <laughs> <laughs> if you're less popular than the J.P. Morgan executive that goes to Epstein Island, <laughs> you might need to restructure your company. <laughs> And use, <laughs> and use Disney characters as slang for your hookups. Wow. Yeah. Okay. On another note, we also wanted to mention, like, um, so there's the Star Cruiser, another really popular decision by Disney. Brilliant. Where um, the Star Cruiser is that resort here at Disney World, not too far from us. Where you can go and cosplay like Star Wars, and it's really cool. It just costs five thousand dollars to do it for two days. Um, we it's just been reported this week. I love this that there that Disney has now filed a permit to do construction there. Now you have to, they have to file permits just to kind of yeah. even do things. It hasn't now, been open that long. No, it hasn't. And they's, they've yeah. not been doing well. In fact, they've been struggling at this point to get reservations. And they've been chalking it up to, what well, we're doing refurbishments. And we're thinking, really? In a year? What are yeah. the people doing to that poor place when they get in there? I'm like, eh, I paid $5,000. If I want to draw on the walls and Sharpie, I can. Well, apparently a lot because I know somebody that works there talked about having to um, clean up after the guests and fix things every time that they left. So kind of bit. The argument that I had with him was like, it really needs to have a pool. And he really was like, but it's space. And I, but it needs to have a pool. It can be done. <laughs> yeah. It could be know, the first ever indoor pool at disney world it would be awesome so i hope that's what the construction's all about is trying to figure out a way to put in an indoor pool because that that might help a little well but they're not selling out 
No. It's not going to bring people in for $5,000 for two nights just because they add a pool. That's not going to cut it. I think that they're going to build timeshare. And I'm not saying that like I'm excited for the timeshare. I just mm-hmm. think that's going to be their next ta- tactic to try to save this thing is to like have timeshare out there. Now, I'm going to sell on that. I don't think that's what it is. I can't imagine how much points you'd have to have in order to accommodate for it. be like, yes, you can come stay at the Star Cruiser timeshare mm-hmm. for, I don't know, two million points. Yeah, one of the, the thing about the, the timeshares is that they are have bigger rooms because you're traveling typically with larger families. Oh, and you're supposed to be staying there for like a week. Yeah. And there's supposed to be, there's always well, like apartment, like you're making your own food. And this is clearly not that because you literally can't stay there for more than two days. You have to check out and recheck yourself back yeah, in. So you're I, definitely not I, looking for food. I don't know how food. to do that. Yeah. Maybe they'd, t- they'd all get to like make the blue shrimp. It'll just get stocked. Uh, each of the time shares is stocked with blue shrimp. Mm-hmm. Certainly not going to be stocked with eggs. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I still think ultimately they're just going to have to convert this into a nice hotel. And that's really what they need to do. But they're going to go that route kicking and screaming all the way because they make so much profit off of that thing if they can fill it if they can't <laughs> fill it then it just becomes funny <laughs> anyway anyway that's anyway. that's what's going on with the star cruiser we'll keep tabs on with it and see where it goes from here um so until next time i'm scott ball that's georgia ball go read some carl bart's uncle scrooge while they still exist and have a good time with it until then we'll see you next time Bye-bye. Bye.